to introduce our guests. One is a TV cook inviting fans around to her place for a good chat and a great bit of food in a new TV series. And the other is a brilliant actor who starred in shows like It's a Sin and fronts the band years and years, but is now preparing to fly the flag for the UK at this year's Eurovision Song Contest. Please welcome Dame Prue Leith and Ollie Alexander. <laughs> Hello both. Hello. And we know, of course, that you have history, you two, because of the Bake Off. Yes. Um, Ollie, how was that for you? <laughs> so stressful, but, <laughs> but so fun, but um, yeah, quite hard. Stressful in the tent. But did you get a Hollywood handshake? I did get a Hollywood handshake. I made quite a good pie. But then after the pie, it all went a bit downhill and I didn't do very as well. Not many people get a Hollywood handshake. Uh, no, hard. barely anybody. It's hard to come by. Uh, Prue, new lineup though, coming for uh, Bake Off yeah. in the Stand Up to Cancer celebrity special. Who have we got? Oh, lots, everybody you've ever heard of is there. But the, the ones that I remember enjoying most is we had one where we had the Reverend Girl Coles and Sarah Cox yes. together. And it was very odd because they just. I don't know, sometimes it just gels and everybody gets on to work together well. And, um, no. I can't believe Danny Dyer turned up in it. Yeah, amazing. I know. Oh, he yeah. was so funny. It was he? <laughs> oh. So funny. But, you know, the wonderful thing about comedians is that you don't have to do any work. You know, the, the presenters usually have to work quite hard to make bakers who are quite nervous mm. and are not used to being on telly and they don't know about the microwave. You know, they just scared they're scared of everything and so it takes a lot to get them to start talking and be relaxed but comedians you don't even have to you don't even have to say hello to them the minute they see the camera they're off it's the perfect yeah. guest Love they're the it. perfect guest yeah. they do all the work and i i think um one of the reasons we all absolutely love Stand Up to Cancer is because everybody is there because they want to be there you know either because they love the show or because they've had some experience with cancer, like some loved person has died of cancer or something, and so that they really want to do it. They're there to make raise money. Yeah. But then, of course, as soon as they get there, because they're comedians or performers or actors or something, they know what's expected of them and they really deliver. Oh, have Terrific. Have it's a really fun yeah. show to do. Um, now then, we should say there's just a couple of months until the hopes of the UK are pinned on Ollie here as he performs <laughs> at this year's Eurovision <laughs> Song Contest in Malmo. No pressure, Ollie's going to be oh, fine. Yeah, now oh, before God. we chat about what's in store, <laughs> here's what Ollie will be singing. I watching it on TV with my family and I just thought, God, wouldn't it be amazing? I, I was making a lot of new music for my new album and I just thought, God, I would love to take a song to Eurovision. And I just feel like the kind of music I love, like 80s music, synth pop, it's like quite a good fit for Eurovision. Yeah. And I just love to put on a show. So that's what I'm going to do. You are the but perfect do, person for this. Yeah. Do, do, oh, thank you. Do you... I mean, how does the how does the process work? Do you um, I, audition for it? I mean, do you apply for it? I kind well, I threw my hat into the ring. Basically, mm. I, I I said to them, I really want to do Eurovision. Here's a few songs that I think might work. What do you think? Yeah. And um, yeah. They well, said uh, yes. And, and here was I thinking you were an actor. Well, I do both. <laughs> he's he's both. a he's, triple yeah, threat. A triple threat. What's exactly. the third? Oh, dancing. dancing. Dancing, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, 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 but that's it. You know, you, you always come across as such a, a, a confident person. So, I mean, how does this compare to, like, you know, that moment where you were dancing on Elton's piano at the Brits, you know, because that is just pure... Look at that there. Oh, yes. I mean, you can't say you were nervous there. So, I mean, how does, how does Eurovision compare? You know, I feel like this... The thing is, I'm so looking forward to be able to do my song on that stage in front of so many people. It really is like, it is a dream come true, but at the same time, it's a competition and it's like a completely different environment that I'm used to, which is fun and exciting. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm, I, I feel quite nervous. 
as yeah. well. well. It's a Thank big you deal. Well. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Du's pois all the way, love. Yeah. Uh, now then, we've been inundated, OK, with questions yeah. from fans. Ooh. So we're going to hand over to them, essentially. So okay. Hallie asks, what are the three most important things that you would be packing for Sweden? Oh, OK. Do you know what? I've got this... There's something my mum gave me. It's a traditional little Swedish luck charm. It's called a Dala horse. It's like a okay. mini horse. So I'll take that with me. Yep. Um, probably like some honey, like throat, or like something for my throat. Yeah. yeah. And um, knee pads for the choreography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There you are, oh, then. Very good. What about this? Uh, Craig has said, uh, if you could duet with any former UK <laughs> Eurovision participant, who would it be? Oh, my gosh. You know, I've got... I mean, I loved Imani. I love mm. Gina G. I love Precious. I love Scooch. So it, it would be any of them, basically. We could all do a big medley together, maybe. You're a big Gina G fan. Yeah. Oh, I love Gina. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, ah. Um, Ooh, ah. Now then, oh, a question from another Ollie. Which entry from this year's Eurovision is your favourite so far? Obviously, apart from your own. Oh, it's hard because there's a lot of really, really great entries. Croatian entry, Baby Lasagna. Is Baby really, Lasagna? Baby Lasagna is going to do very well. I love Juiced from the Netherlands. I love the Spanish entry, Nebulosa. I love the Italian entry, Angelina Mango. So, yeah, there's a lot of really good entries this year. Hopefully, when they see everyone's name, they're like, these are all really confusing names. Let's just go with... Ollie Alexander. <laughs> yeah, normal yeah. name. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Rebecca has uh, asked this question and says, uh, Ollie, you've achieved so many incredible things already, like Glastonbury, It's a Sin, working with Kylie, Elton and the Pet Shop Boys. Is there anything else you dream of doing? Oh, that's so nice. I mean, I just feel very lucky and grateful. I just want to keep going and like maybe, maybe I'll write my own film or something. That would be quite fun. Yeah. Like a horror movie, maybe. A horror movie? Yeah. Who's thinking, no, you could call it baby lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte asks, what inspired the whole concept of Dizzy? She says, I'm obsessed with the song and can't wait to see it on the Eurovision stage. Oh, well, sometimes I just come into the studio with, like, a word, and that day, Dizzy was the word. I just thought it would be good to have a song. The song was called Dizzy, and then the, the song kind of just, like, follows on from that, like, what makes you dizzy? I thought, dizzy from your kisses. And then the rest of the song kind of followed from that, like, stuff about, like, going around in circles, feeling dizzy, yeah. Yeah. OK. All right, well, <laughs> well, well a lot of people, Ollie, are really keen to know what the staging is going to oh. look like. I don't know how much you've, you've, you've put into the thought of it, but people are already saying, what three words would you use to describe the staging in Malmo? Oh, um, three words. Um, let's go with evocative. Um, Surpri surprising. Okay. Good, yeah. And dizzy vying. Dizzy. Dizzy. <laughs> dizzy. dizzy. Yes, dizzy. exactly. Okay, fine. Uh, oh, well, wonderful. Ollie's single Dizzy is out now when you'll be able to see him perform it live on the big night, Saturday, the 11th of May, right here on BBC One. Come on, Ollie, you got this. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, now, as we are all preparing to kick off our shoes for the weekend, there's no rest for Prue here, who's thrown the doors open to her own kitchen for a <laughs> chat and a bite to eat. Let's take a look. I'm in my 80s, so I haven't got time to waste. This series is all about the things that really matter to me. <laughs> Family, fun, <laughs> food and friends. And some of those friends will be joining me. Oh, yeah. We'll be sharing simple home-cooked recipes. But I don't normally tell people about that bit, only people I like. <laughs> and celebrating the best produce. for a Saturday morning. Now, we just saw the clip there. Your kitchen is an incredible collection of utensils, which, and you wouldn't expect less from Dame Pruleith. <laughs> but Helen asks, what are the three cooking utensils that you couldn't do without? Decent knife, wooden spoon, thermometer. Mm. Ooh, one of those that you stick in a turkey. Or anything else that you uh, wish to stick <laughs> it in. <laughs> Anything else? Let's move on. <laughs> move on. <laughs> um, now then, it is a lovely series. What... Stop it. What made you want to invite the cameras in, Prue? Um, well, I've always, I always wanted a show of my own. I always thought it would be fun to be in charge of who comes and what you do and mm. so yeah. And I wanted it to be at home because the way I cook now is much more casual and slapdash, really, than when I was a professional chef and having to do things really precisely. Yeah. 
I mean, now my idea of absolute hell would be to have to, you know, operate a pair of tweezers oh. to put the micro leaves on top of the mm. mini, whatever. Yeah. So I, so I thought uh, what we wanted, I wanted to have was f food that is really simple to do, but is really delicious. And because I live in the middle of the Cotswolds, and we have fantastic suppliers, mainly, of course, because there are lots of fairly well-heeled people living in the Cotswolds. So it means that people who have little artisan businesses, are ba bakers and a chap who does um, salami and somebody else who does smoked salmon and somebody else who d makes jams and yeah. who d makes cheeses and all sorts of things, I'm very keen to showcase food heroes. Mm. So the Cotswolds seemed the right place to do it. And also it meant I don't have to get up early in the morning. I do. Yeah. Well, I, I, I love also as well that it's not just you sharing your recipes. Your, your guests are sharing their cooking tips as well, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah, if they like it. I mean, I have to say that one or two of them have said, I don't do cooking. <laughs> I said, well, I really want to do that. Um, um, Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, for example, I said, what, but what do you give your guests when they come for dinner? And he said, a rotisserie chicken from the supermarket. <laughs> so that's what we have. Well, and it's enough. a very good rotisserie I, I, chicken. I, I, I bet it is. Uh, Ollie, are you much of a, you much of a, a host? No. No? No, no, no. 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 What's your go-to dish? What do you make? Do you know what? I, do, I, I, I can make a lasagna if I'm a veggie lasagna. Wow. Wow. Lazy nice. lasagna. A lazy lasagna, yeah, yeah. if I'm pushed good. to it. Why not? Yeah, like why not? Uh, exactly, Ollie, I why not? I mean, my whole point about food is that as long as it's good ingredients and it tastes delicious. Yeah. You really mustn't be snobbish about no. it. No, no, no not exactly. at all. I mean, everybody has a bottle of that famous mayonnaise in their fridge. No, but not everybody makes mayonnaise from scratch. Not everybody makes, hardly anybody makes puff pastry from scratch. No, you, you can just get you... the roll, yes. you know, roly poly. Roll Absolutely, and it's delicious and it works. Yeah. Mm. So. Now, one of the things that's new on this programme is a brand new celebrity. It's your husband, John. I know, I'm very, I'm frankly pissed off about it. <laughs> well, Pruluth, you can't say that on the one show, it's a family show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, I'm very, I'm very unhappy about it because, <laughs> because he has turned out to be an absolute star. I mean, I thought I was being really kind. I thought, well, as it's at home and in yeah. our house, the least I can do is let him be in it, you know, or yeah. ask him if he'd like to be in it. Well, he turns out to be an absolute natural. Uh, and, you know, I, I keep wanting to say, look, I am supposed to be the telly star around here, you, you know. <laughs> but I can see if we ever get a second series, it'll be John Playfair's Cotswold Kitchen and I'll get a walk-on part, you know. Oh. I'll be allowed to. Oh, it's nice though, isn't it? It's fun it's, to do it together. It, it's so it's fantastic. Prue's Cotswold Kitchen is on tomorrow morning at 11.40 on ITV1 and ITVX. We've had so many comments come in. I, I do have to say, uh, Ollie, Helen has said as well, just go, Ollie Alexander. Absolutely. You are amazing. You Thank are you. There you have it. Uh, thanks so much to Ollie and Prue for joining us tonight. On Monday, Seleni Henry will be here along with some big surprise guests who want to give him a comic relief send-off in style. Have a lovely weekend. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Wow.